Good afternoon all. I wholeheartedly welcome each and every one of you for the talk on climate and land use changes and its impacts on sustainable water resources management coordinated by IEI MPETS Civil Engineering Department. We will start this function with a silent prayer. I request all to stand in their respective seats for the prayer. Thank you all. Please be seated. Now, let me invite Ms. Manju George, HRD of Civil Engineering Department, MBITS, to give a red carpet welcome to everyone present here. Over to you, ma'am. Respected Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. T. A. L. Do, Professor, Civil Engineering Department of IIT Bombay, Dr. Soli George, Dean, Planning and Development and Professor in the Department of Civil Engineering of MBITS, Professor Jobel Vergis, dear students and my dear colleagues, a very good afternoon to one and all. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you to the session on climate and land use changes and its impacts on sustainable water resources management which is organized by the Institution of Engineers India Students Chapter, Department of Civil Engineering of MBITS. Today, we have an eminent resource person, Dr. T. I. Eldo, professor from IIT Bombay and one of our Board of Governors members. We are very thankful to Dr. T. I. Eldo, who is constantly associating with many of the activities of MBITS and who is a great academician too. On behalf of all those present here, I wholeheartedly welcome Dr. T. Eldo, sir, to this program. <laughs> Dr. Soli George, Dean Planning and Development and one of the professors of the Department of Civil Engineering is present here. She is a well-known academician having vast experience in teaching and retired as a principal of MA College of Engineering, Kodamangalam. Dr. Soli is a constant motivator for us and acknowledging her all supports, a warm welcome to you, ma'am. With great pleasure, I welcome all my dear students and colleagues to this program, attain greater knowledge. I wish all of you a very fruitful session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Sauli George, Dean of MBITS, to enter the felicitation speech. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon to you all. Respected uh, Professor Dr. T. A. Eldo, HOD uh, Mrs. Manju, then Joe Bill Varghese, and other colleagues of Civil Engineering Department, and my dear students. I'm standing here with uh, so much of happiness because I'm going back to years of 1986 when I joined as a lecturer in MA College of Engineering and I started my teaching with Eldo's batch in 1986. Though now Eldo is coming from Bombay IIT to give a lecture here, he started his education in nearby schools and also in MA College of Engineering. Um, that is why I am very happy. Pandori Cholunda, Teachers and students are very happy. I am telling all these things is, though, uh, even from the uh, schools in the village and all, uh, his, his studies, he started there. And uh, with the constant hard work, I know while he was a student in MA College of Engineering, he was a constant, uh, and, uh, he, uh, he was keen in, her, in his studies and was hard working. With hard working only, he could reach to this. So why I'm telling is, even from our region or locality, people can reach in the highest position. In IIT Bombay, he was the institute chair. Now I think he is professor, people can come, but he, he is in the grade of HAG, higher academic grade that many people cannot get. Only very few people are achieving that grade in Kerala, 
but he could other because of his constant work and sincere effort and hard working so people of this embits or students of this embits should see how people are working and reaching to higher level so i am not taking much time although i am so happy for being with you in the same stage while i was in ma college also he delivered many lectures for the students of mays Uh, with the, uh, so without much uh, introduction about you you will realize it while he is presenting things okay so we can wait for the presentation thank you thank you all thank you ma'am now i would like to invite our resource person dr t i eldo the institute chair professor in the department of civil engineering iit bombay he was a water resources planner and modeler at mot mcdonald international cambridge uk senior research fellow at hydrotech research institute national taiwan university taipei and also as assistant professor in iit kharagpur india he obtained his btech degree in civil engineering from ma college of engineering kodamangalam done his mtech and phd from iit bombay and post doctoral fellowship from institute for hydromechanics germany his research interest includes groundwater flow and pollution investigation computational fluid dynamics coastal hydrodynamics watershed management application of numerical methods in water and environment he had seven sponsored research project completed abroad and 14 sponsored research project within india he has done around 35 major industrial research projects and 45 other consultancy project till 2016 He has published more than 140 journal papers, eight book chapters, and submitted two patents. He has served as editor for many international journals and is the life member of various professional bodies like Institution of Engineers India, Indian Water Works Association, Fluid Mechanics and Fluid Power Society India, Indian Society for Hydraulics and Society for Technical Education. Now I would like to invite Dr. T. I. Eldu sir for the talk. Over to you, sir. very good afternoon and uh, i am very happy to be here as professor oli already mentioned so i used to come to kerala many times since i am associated with many colleges many places so anyway uh, uh, yeah, yeah okay okay so the for the benefits and much better interaction i will change between malayalam and english but the talk will be on english so so oli teacher varna vale so i am of course i am coming from a uh, വില്ലേജ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഓൾസോ ഓൾസോ ഇവിടെ എം എ കോളേജ് ബി ടെക്ക് ചെയ്ത ശേഷം സോ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് സ്ട്രഗിൾസ് വെൻ ടു ഹയർ സ്റ്റഡീസ് എം ടെക് പി എച്ച് ഡി എക്സെട്ര ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഓൾസോ വിസിറ്റഡ് സോ ഫോർ ഹയർ സ്റ്റഡീസ് എബ്രോഡ് ദെൻ ഓൾസോ വിസിറ്റഡ് മെനി മെനി കൺട്രീസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ കെയിം ബാക്ക് ഫൈനലി ഡിസൈഡ് ടു കം ബാക്ക് സോ വൈ ഐ എം സെയിങ് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് നൗ ഇൻ ദ യങ്ങർ ജനറേഷൻ വി സി എ a major change in your trends that uh, you are thinking that is yes, something doing in uh, various other countries only the best not india is not so best that is some thinking is there between the younger generations so don't think like that so wherever you are whatever you are doing if you do excellent if you do the best you will be appreciated not only in india abroad everywhere so there is no doubt about it since uh, so why i am saying is that ipo naan naan ipo naan sol teacher varnu varnu naan ivada bit tak edu matte iit la mtek edu phd la abroad that but veli ivada iit il thane bit tak edu shesham america il okka poi phd ok kaynittu vannavare vannavare pole i was since i was the head of department last till last year so 3 4 years i was heading them and they could not achieve many of those so it is all whatever you want to do you can definitely do and then uh, you should have a plan and it is don't think that okay simply after a btech fly to germany or other countries and then try to settle there that is of course that is all depending upon your own interest your own uh, motivation your own uh, way of thinking that is all, all, all well appreciated but uh, don't think that yes that is the only way to get excellence or get the best in life there is so many options are there Uh, world is so big and uh, things are since we can we reach wherever we want so generally in iit bombay whenever you go for a promotion 
So generally, they will not, the, the, after the interview, the head of the departments will not say you have been promoted, but uh, he or she will come and tell, okay, sky is the limit for you. That means, that word means it is, uh, you are promoted. So like that, I also would like to tell all my young fellows here, uh, boys and girls, don't think that yes, going abroad or these things only will work, but wherever you can, wherever you are, going for higher studies in even India, IITs, since uh, nowadays what I observe is that even from Kerala, the gate exam holders are very, very, I mean, those who are scoring very well in gate is very low. So now, but uh, if you go to the North India, like uh, whenever you are s sitting in many committees and all those things, students coming in from North India, UP, Bihar, or even Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, etc., they are large number of students are scoring very well in gate and they are coming to IIT. And then, of course, there is so many other things are there. So why I'm telling all these things that, yes, you have got so many options in front of you. It is not only uh, just like, okay, uh, immediately going to abroad for some studies, but of course, that is also good, no doubt about it. But uh, the options are too much. So also, you may think that uh, being in civil engineering, many of the students think that, yes, structural engineering is the only civil engineering, but that is not correct. So since uh, I was also, of course, whenever I was doing um, B.Tech also, I was also thinking the same way. But then uh, when I joined for master's or when I joined for PhD later, I understood there is a large pool of uh, areas are there and large kind of things we can do in which will be highly satisfying to your career as well as as a person, as, as your concerned. It is not only structure engineering, structure engineering is very good, excellent, no doubt, but I am saying there are so many areas are there in civil engineering. So especially many of you will be knowing that, okay, environmental engineering, then uh, water resource engineering, hydraulics, then uh, like now latest like remote sensing, geographic information systems, or even transportation engineering, then um, uh, coastal engineering. There are so many branches are there. Actually, as all of you know that civil engineering is the mother of all engineering. Generally, we used to tell civil engineering is the mother of all engineering. Since uh, if you look into all other aspects from civil only, many of the other branches have been uh, later went to or we, since we are dealing with uh, directly what is, what is the people needs or what is the people are, uh, say, without home, without water, without road, without infrastructure, we cannot survive. Even if, okay, one day electricity is not there, still you can survive. But without a house, without uh, all other, or without even water, you cannot survive. So that way, you should be proud of, yes, I am a civil engineer. Yes, I am proud of being a civil engineer. You should be. Since you don't uh, say many of the things, uh, people think that, yes, uh, whenever uh, immediately after a 12th exam, students think that, okay, computer science is the only area where I should study and then I should become a computer engineer. And so that you may get uh, money th at the beginning stage, you may get a little bit more money. Uh, that is actually the industry's concerns. You see that in civil engineering, when we critically analyze, the, the, what happens is that um, initial periods, uh, so especially since uh, being civil engineer, you need a lot of practice, lot of uh, training is required. So that the initial phase, first few years, your salary may be slightly less, but of course, when you are going for higher, higher, higher positions, your salary will be even many companies, since we deal in IIT, we deal with many, many companies and we also do a lot of projects for these companies. So generally, after maybe after five years, your salary and uh, those who are in computer science or other areas will be almost similar. So you don't get, uh, you don't need to worry, yes, why I joined civil, you be a proud civil engineer and you do your best and then uh, you can, and not only structural engineering, many, many areas are there where civil engineering, lot of research work, lot of uh, things can happen. Okay, anyway, with this, uh, to posit your time, I will not go much more on this uh, uh, career letter since maybe I can give a lecture on career orientation itself later. But uh, today, as uh, uh, Manju Madam told, okay, you need a topic on, of your interest to present a lecture. So that I thought, okay, since you see that uh, now uh, we are in, a, in the last few decades, we are in a very, very, uh, uh, say, uh, severely affected due to the climate change. All of you know that, uh, those who are reading newspapers, all those things, you know that uh, uh, many places we can see that now, last few weeks, there was heat wave, 
or uh, severe droughts and then uh, now the monsoon comes immediately the flooding problems will start and then uh, you see that uh, it is not only say whatever you construct or whatever even all other kinds of engineer it is not only civil related but of course environmental related or even electrical or engineering related aspects are coming into this climate science uh, actually it is a science but when we merge with the engineering it we call it as a uh, say especially in the area of civil engineering mainly we are dealing with water and uh, water is concerned hydrology is concerned all of you know that uh, this changes in climate you know that mainly due to global warming or the 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 the, uh, the increase in ghg gases greenhouse gas that is creating all big problems for the last few decades and now we are very much affected as you know that uh, uh, you may be read in newspaper that uh, imd indian material department all that on 27th monsoon will be here even some of them declared that monsoon is here but uh, i could not see any rain i came here uh, almost last tuesday tuesday to this tuesday almost one week is over i could not experience any kind of uh, heavy rain here but so that is why we say that there is a huge changes as far as climate is concerned and being a civil engineer there is huge scope of studying various aspects of this climate change and its impact and then of course related areas like geography information system remote sensing all are very very important areas as a many times you may think that okay only structural engineering is important of course that is important but many other areas are also there with a huge importance as far as human life is concerned or the existence or sustenance of the the society or the human being itself or nature itself is concerned okay with this brief introduction the topic which i was going to discuss today with you is climate change and land use change and its impact on sustainable water resource management actually i have specifically chosen a study area of this area itself that means you know that um, we are part of motuva river basin and uh, the nearby river kodamangalam river as all of you know that that is also joining to motuva river uh, near uh, motuva itself so we have done a full study on the motuva river basin what is happening now and what is going to happen by end of 2100 i mean end of the century so that is uh, a case study actually uh, iit bombay in association with nit suratkal and then the central water resource development management government of india we did a big project to study the climate change and its impacts on hydrology or water resources uh, in kerala or uh, western ghats region so this is this study this monitor river basin also part of that so that work will be highly presenting here okay so here uh, we will be starting with uh, why what is climate change why what are the issues related to climate change why we need to study these details and uh, then uh, we will be of course you know that um, uh, land use land cover being a, if you look into the surrounding areas you can see that uh, huge changes we can see say in the last few decades so you see that uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, like uh, soli ma'am told that yes i was studying in 86 so actually uh, we were used to even walk from my hometown near kolipulli to kodamangalam so we used to walk in the morning and then you see that whatever the things are there now if you look into that there is huge changes we can observe so land use land cover change is another important area which all of we should be we should be very careful and uh, there was you can see that um, uh, there was a heavy trend of uh, getting uh, houses or bungalows near to the uh, river 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 front bungalows but now after 2018 flooding so i, I am sure that all of you got uh, affected or you have some um, remembrance of what was happening 2018 so now the people are very much afraid as yes, what is going to happen if a heavy rain takes place what will be the situation whether water will come to my home or not or my house or not that kind of questions so this land use land cover change is a major factor which is very very important and then uh, huge changes are taking place so we will be looking what is happening in this basin itself in uh, moisture river basin itself and then how to do as a as an engineer how we can study all those things as i mentioned it is not only structural engineering all those things we need to go through a modeling framework that is an engineer means it's a, his or her role is to uh, say replicate the nature in, a, in an effective way so that we can see that uh, what is going to happen or what will be happening in future or uh, within few days time or whenever that so that is very very important so that is modeling is very very important in engineering all engineering it is not only civil but mechanical electrical computer science everywhere so we how we can use effective modeling 
to understand these details. So that is what we are going to discuss a little bit more details. So as all of you know that we have got so much of water, so you know that, uh, say, now many of you may be staying in this hostel, so in the morning, whenever you are, say, switching on your tap, if there is no water, then all of you know the value of water. So otherwise, you may simply throw the water away. But in the morning when you go to the toilet or when you go for a, a brushing, if no water is there, then only you will know the value of the water. So similarly, so that is, of course, we in Kerala, we are uh, blessed with so much of rain and so much of water, but when you travel uh, to other places like Rajasthan or even uh, northern states, you, can, you will understand the value of water. So that way, you see that uh, the nature is such a way that so much of water is there, but you see the fresh water is hardly 1% of what we can utilize, so that you can see that. And uh, out of this 1%, even almost 99% uh, uh, is uh, deep groundwater. And then out of this available 1% of uh, fresh water that is uh, available in uh, rivers and lakes. And that is, you know, that nowadays it is so much polluted. So that is another area of engineering. It is not only water resource, but environmental engineering is so important, uh, not only for as a professional or as a career, but also for the nature or the understand what is happening and then uh, to make people life better. So that is environmental engineering is very, very important. So that way, the water available, you see that is hardly 1% of the available fresh water, 99% is groundwater. That is also getting polluted. And then also the, the, the surface water, like rivers, lakes, etc., all, all polluted. So that way, uh, it is so difficult to, uh, this we need to understand as an engineer, you should have a perspective what is happening, what will happen. So that is very important. So that way, when you look into this water resource on the earth, you can see that, uh, why it is so important? You can see that it is so varying with respect to space and time. So you may be knowing that all over India, the average rainfall is 114 centimeter. And in Kerala, it is around uh, between 20, 20 to 250 centimeter to uh, 300 centimeter in Kerala. But if you go to Rajasthan, it is hardly 20 centimeters, so almost 10% of what we are getting in Kerala. So that way, the variation, the spatial variation, so whenever it is north, the northeastern side or western country in south, south side, we are having too, plenty of water, plenty of rainfall, but when you go to other sides, it is very, very scarce. So that is one major thing. And then also, you know that uh, this is spatial, uh, temporal variation. Temporal means it is keep on changing with time, so you can see that uh, uh, generally we used to have monsoon starting from June, July, August, September and October it will be reducing and the next uh, five, six months we used to have very lean uh, periods and no rain or it is very difficult to, water scarcity will be there. But then uh, now within this context I want to say the climate change and its impact so you can see that what is happening is that so the climate is changing so generally say during my school time or my college time, June, June first means yes, there will be definitely there will be rain. Definitely, there a lot of rain will happen, and a lot of we will be uh, going to. So we used to go to schools or colleges with uh, wet dresses, and it was so difficult. But now you see that this trend is drastically changing, and then you can see uh, now even in India is concerned. You see that this is uh, India region. So India is concerned compared to many other countries, the availability of water is very, very low. And even uh, said that is mainly uh, one more reason is that our population is uh, keep on increasing. And by 2050, you see that if 2000 it was, uh, we were having 2200 uh, meter cube per person per year. Now 2050, it will be almost half of that. I mean 1000 meter cube per person per year. And then uh, of course, Already it is low, and now with respect to climate change, there can be also changes happening. That is almost 10 percent, 20 percent changes also can happen. So that is what is why it is so important in climate change. So when we look into the terms of sustainable development or sustainable management, there are so many aspects. So in terms of water, so we do, if you do not have sufficient inadequate access to uh, drinking water, then groundwater overdrafting. So if you are having a well, may not there may not be water after some time, and then. Pollution issue, as I already mentioned, many of our rivers and lakes are highly polluted. And then uh, there is a lot of conflicts. So if you look into in detail, there is uh, problems with Bangladesh and India, or even in our own state, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, a lot of issues are there related to water. So that way, uh, the, the changes, what is happening, 
for sustainable developments when we look into water is concerned water is very very important for uh, any kind of development any kind of progress so that you can see that um, all these many many issues are coming and there we need to look into in a, in a holistic way so we need to solve many problems so that is why as i mentioned uh, uh, it is not only structural engineering, water resource, or hydraulics, or environment. Uh, there are very important branches, and nowadays, those, those students who are joining for these all these branches, they are also well placed. It is not only structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, but uh, water resource, environment, all are well placed since so many companies, so many activities are taking place in this area. Okay, coming back to our topic of climate change. What is climate? Why, why when you say that there is a change? So you see that there is uh, two terms are there, one is climate and another one is weather. So you, when you look in the newspaper or in the radio or in the television, you can see daily they will be telling today's weather. So weather means, yes, now it is going to rain tomorrow, that is weather. I mean, or within next few days also, uh, many departments will be predicting, okay, this is the rain pattern or this is the temperature pattern. So within few days time or few, even few weeks or few months time, when we say that is called a weather. But the climate is concerned when we say in a holistic way, this is, it is not the time span is not few days or even few weeks or even few months, it is generally so years, so generally we say that uh, it is a time span of 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. So when we say that, say many of the, that your teachers will be knowing that even uh, say by December, January, we used to, without the without proper uh, winter clothes, we are not able to uh, say go to many places, in, even in Kerala or even in at Kodamangalam. But now you see that uh, there is no need of any of these vendor clothes or even if you go to places like Bangalore, there it is uh, also becoming hot or uh, many areas. So that is what is called, it is a systematic change for a decades, two or three decades. So that is what we call it as climate change. So these changes, as I already mentioned, due to many factors are there, like uh, global warming, industrialization, greenhouse gas emissions, and then of course local change like land use, land cover changes, so that is also important. So these consequences, you can see that, uh, as I mentioned, in 2018 floods, all of you would have already experienced this, so there is uh, severe floods many times this year also there can be floods. Then after the drought, uh, floods, there can be droughts kind of situations, and then uh, you would have read that uh, in places like Australia or even Germany, forest fires. So that is also another important aspect you can see as far as the consequence of climate change. So you can see that this is uh, for India, if you look into these extremes, so like uh, flooding, all those extremes you can see in Ch Kerala 2018 and 19, Chennai flood in 2015. So like that many, many uh, flooding events you can see. And then also you can see that the cyclone, cyclones, especially the cyclones where they used to be there only, only on the Bay of Bengal, but uh, now you can see many cyclones coming to uh, Arabian Sea also. So that is another t change what is happening due to the climate change. So that is what you can see. So now, as I mentioned, uh, the, the uh, water, the hydrology is very, very important. So you can see due to increasing temperature, so you, the after impacts will be uh, evapotranspiration will be increasing, evaporation will be increasing, water quality will be affected, then uh, there is a stream flow will be very low. So even if you have build big dams, if there is no sufficient water, they cannot get even power, even especially places like Kerala, we are having almost 35 to 40 percent, percent of the power is coming from hydropower station, so there will be, it will be affected. And then a uh, lot of other problems like uh, uh, droughts or groundwater recharge. And then another important aspect is that this rise in sea levels. So many of you may be uh, thinking that whether uh, I am talking in terms of civil engineering. Yes, these are all civil engineering aspects only. So please understand it is not only you construct building or this thing. That is one part of civil engineering. But the civil engineering is so broad area that there are so many aspects of so many interesting aspects are there. It is also study of the nature. It is also study of what is happening in the ecosystem and uh, uh, ecology. So now uh, this is a hydrologic implication, there are so many implications are there. So that all as an engineer, you need to uh, model it or you need to study it in detail. So we call it as hydrological modeling. So here uh, we need to assess the impacts on water resource due to changes in land use, land cover, changes in climate variables. So many studies have to be done. 
and then we need to go for say for example uh, say our uh, even uh, nearest airport cochin airport so all of you know that it is uh, one of the good airports but there is in 2018 flooding almost two weeks it was closed why so please think about it as a civil engineer why it has happened so you see that if you those who have visited nadubasheri airport you can see that that airport is constructed very near to periyar river and actually you can say it is on the banks of periyar river itself so that is where the problem of this land use land cover or the issues so there if a proper studies has been done by an engineer before this site was selected so generally we say that for airport kind of construction which is a major infrastructure we need to study 100 year return period of rain so you all of you know that uh, even your 2018 flooding came you would have studied uh, that in uh, there was a heavy f rainfall in the 1920s at the beginning of 1920s and that rainfall was much more than actually what has happened in 2018 so if somebody studied in detail whether that kind of impact will be there whenever we are constructing airports in such a on the banks of peria river then uh, they would not have chosen that site so that is where uh, for land use planning as an engineer, as a civil engineer, or as, a, as a planner, you should know all these details. So that way we need to study in uh, what is happening, flood forecast in future, and then also we need to know while designing, we need to know what is going to happen in 100 year return period, uh, say how much area will be flooded, what kind of problems will be there. So that is also very important. So this slide shows this is as I mentioned, uh, so if you are a structural engineer, say if I know STAD, then uh, if I know the parameters, there is nothing great in that you put the numbers, you will get a definitely a design to you. But these kinds of studies, you cannot do that since you are directly dealing with the nature. This is not artificial, it is not there, okay, you construct frames and then beams and columns. So that is all things much much standardized but here it is so uncertain that that is where the challenges in doing all these kinds of studies so you see that uh, our land use is changing our climate is changing our land itself is uh, you call it we call it as digital elevation model it is so cha uh, drastic changes are there and so in data is also changing so all these data are needed even to make a model so when i am saying that uh, i am modeling what to river basin I have to choose, I have to get all this data in a very systematic way on, a, on your lab, on a, your system, on your desktop or your uh, computer and then only you can put this input, input into the, the, your model and then you only you can go for uh, studies and then understand what is happening and what can happen in future. So this is, uh, first we do go for the modeling and then we do the impact studies. So impact studies are concerned, it can be for short terms, like okay, next year or few years time, or it can be decades, as I mentioned generally in the studies we do for up to 2100 at the end of the century, I mean next uh, 78 years or 80 years, what is going to happen, that kind of studies. And then you can plan, say as I mentioned, if you are going to construct a uh, airport or if you are going to construct a major dam, then what will be the impacts so that is required to be studied and similarly short term means okay of course of course like in 2018 a flooding takes place this year or 2023 then what kind of uh, adaptation strategies can be put in as a decision maker as a planner as a um, uh, uh, authority we need to know all these details so that way uh, many issues to be sorted out in this kinds of studies so like uh, what availability whether sufficient water will be available in future and then uh, uh, change in frequency and magnitude of extreme events like as I mentioned the floodings and the droughts and then uh, of course delay on onset of monsoon that is a major you may think that since in Kerala if you take into the agricultural farming is very very low if you visit to northern states or even southern states there all the farmers are waiting the monsoon to come then only they can put their seed like uh, rice cultivation or all those things so that is very very important and then uh, water demands, so how much water is available, how it is varying, then salinity intrusions in cost area, all those things we need to study in detail. So here we are doing, I am going to present how we are going to do this kinds of modeling. So we go with the uh, climate change scenarios. So many of you know, who does read in newspaper, there is a, a body called IPCC, Inter Panel of uh, Government Agencies, Climate Change uh, Agencies, all the governments came together and then uh, uh, a few years back this agency only got the Nobel Prize 
So that agency is studying in detail and many of our colleagues from India are also part of this. So we are having a specific model called, uh, it is not only, you may not uh, able to think about the entire globe, we are going to, there is a models are available which is called uh, global circulation models. So we can, it is not only the, the atmosphere but ionosphere, all those things will be putting it, putting into grids and then we make a model using supercomputers and then what is happening in the last uh, 50 or 100 years we study in detail and then based upon that, from that trench we can go for the project, we call it as pr not prediction but projection. We can project what is going to happen by end of the century 2100 or after 100 years what is going to happen. All those things can be studied. So that kind of models are called global circulation models. And from that, actually in India, though we are scientifically so advanced, we do not have a global circulation model yet. We are rely upon Canadian, German or American models for this purpose. And uh, then based upon that, we can have regional climate models. So the, as I mentioned, the system is so complex. So we need to see that what is happening in Montreal or Basin or in Kerala or even South India, what is happening, we need to study. So there we need to have a regional climate models based upon the global models. And then we study the climate change scenarios, as I mentioned that near future up to 2030, then mid future 2050 or end of the century, what is happening. So there, as far as water is concerned, we need to have hydrologic models. So there we can understand whether some, how much water is available, what is going to happen, whether there can be more flooding in end of the century or middle of the century, and then uh, whether there can be pollution problem. All those details can be studied, and then we can do the impact assessment. So this is the way we do these kinds of studies. So to have uh, some background on this, uh, those who are having little bit interest on uh, climate, Please understand that uh, as per this IPCC norms, so they, they come with uh, one report every five year. It is earlier it was called AR5, uh, report of fifth report. Then now just uh, September 2021, AR6 report, sixth re uh, report has been produced by IPCC. And there the variations, so they call it as this kind of RCP, regional concentration path. So this is called representative concentration pathways, RCP 2.6, 4.5. 6, 8.5. What is this number indicates? This indicates that how much, say, the heat will be generated, uh, the radiated. So 2.6 uh, watt per meter square, how much will be radiated back to the to the environment, to the atmosphere. So that is indicating. So R RCP 2.6 means we are much safe. There is no much reduction. I mean, what has happened in the last few decades, the, the, the GHG gas emission or the global warming will be reduced drastically, but that kind of scenario is not going to happen since we are having America or China or many countries, whichever they are using so much of uh, uh, the, the petrol, petroleum products or coal products, then it is not going to happen. So generally we say that even a, a similar trend, a reduction scenario in which a significant GHG emission is taking place, that we call it as RCP 4.5. So there, you would have read the newspaper Paris Agreement, lot of discussion took place about Paris Agreement uh, two years back. And if that, uh, if the, the countries are reducing their uh, emission of the carbon dioxide, then we will be able to re reach this RCP 4.5. This is what we are optimistic. So generally we do this kinds of trends, uh, trend uh, studies. But uh, if it is going to uh, increase, I mean, we are going to have many, lot of uh, thermal power plants or other kinds of plants, and then if you are going to uh, spoil the, the, the nature itself, there will be global warming will be increasing. So that we call it as RCP 8.5. So generally we do in this kind of study 8.5 and 4.5 studies. One is the normal condition, which is optimistic, and a very pessimistic condition, which can go to 8.5. So that we do not want to happen, but that is what is, uh, can happen if the same level of things are happening. And as I mentioned in 2021, this uh, AR6 report came, and that RCP scenario, they changed it to socio, uh, shared socioeconomic pathways, SSP, that is called SSP. So that is very similar to this 4.5, 8.5 we can study, and the, <coughs> sorry, the same pattern is happening. So under this, what can happen, you can see that uh, whenever the end of the century, I mean, maybe during your lifetime itself or your children's lifetime, what is going to happen? You see that if it is uh, 4.5, then uh, we'll be having much better conditions, but if it is 8.5, the temperature will keep on increasing about 2.5 to 4 degrees centigrade. So that what will be the impacts? Impact will be too much. It is uh, 
global, the, the, the sea level rising will be happening, then the rainfall will be totally uh, erratic and a lot of flooding, a lot of droughts, everything can happen. And similarly, the, 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 the emissions, that will be too much, so you can see that this is happening. It can happen if it is going to 8.5. But 4.5 is much safe, and let us be optimistic that uh, you, this generation or your next generation will be within that bracket itself, and then we can have a better life in the, in the, uh, on this earth. And then, of course, even if you're running to Germany or Canada or wherever it is, we are, these problems will be there. It is not only in India. This climate change or that will be very global. And it is, nobody can say that if, if America is using or Canada is using or China is using more coal and more producing, uh, more uh, carbon dioxide is produced, that impact not only there in China, but India will be affected or even America will be affected. So that is where it is so global. So that way, uh, this will be the effects. And then you can see the, the sea level we can keep on increasing. So sea level increasing means many of the coastal regions like uh, Cochin or Calicut or Trivandrum, all these cities can be affected. And then of course we discussed about the temperature changes and then of course the rainfall will be too much affected. So that is what is can happen. Uh, so you see that this is what we are showing with respect to this, the many places, erratic rainfall can take place, many places flooding can be there, especially this northeast region and then also the, the western Ghats region. There will be too much impact on this, so that is our study shows. So now within this framework, so as an engineer, as a civil engineer, if somebody asks, so you may think that uh, it is not only, so you see that these kinds of studies are very, very important for even insurance companies. If you are going to insure an airport, if you are insure even your own house later, what is going to happen, that kind of uh, details to be needed. So that is where we go for hydrology impact assessment. So you see that, as I mentioned, uh, when you are saying about the future, the main tool is that this global circulation models, and the global circulation models are concerned it is a size of 500 kilometer by 500 kilometer or 250 kilometer by 250 kilometer. But within that grid, we cannot have much uh, studies, much what is happening. So you see that 500 kilometer by 500 kilometer means even uh, say half of Kerala will be covered in that. So we cannot get much uh, meaningful results. So that is why we need to come to a grid of 25 kilometer by 25 kilometer or uh, less than that. So that kind of studies where more hydrological or more impact studies can be done. So that is what we call it as downscaling. So this downscaling, uh, various methods are there. So this is what is giving this global circulation model which you can project the uh, rainfall, the temperature, all till 2100. And then we need to come to project it to the uh, local scale. Say for example, your area, the Mautra River Basin or the Pedia River Basin. So then we need to go for a downscaling. This is called downscaling uh, in, uh, in climate studies. So we, we go for downscaling. There is various techniques are there. One is called statistical downscaling and another one is called dynamic downscaling. So we use these kinds of techniques and then we get to the data which is relevant to your river basin or river area and then we done a hydrological model and then we get uh, various scenarios. So here uh, you see that uh, uh, those who studied uh, the hydrology, there is various models are available. Uh, like uh, I do not know, maybe you would have studied about simple rational formula or very uh, complicated models are also available. So when you study in details, as I mentioned, I am going to present what can happen in uh, Motua River Basin or even this Kodamangalam area, what can happen in future by the end of 2100, what may happen, it may or may not happen, that is a different thing. Uh, so this kind of model, which is called a soil water assessment tool, uh, this model, you can see that uh, it is modeling the entire uh, land, then uh, water hydraulic interactions, and like uh, rainfall to runoff, all those things are uh, modeled in this uh, SWAT model. And uh, we need data like uh, topography, then land use, land cover, then soil properties, weather, land management, all these data are required. And from there, uh, we can run this model even up to 2100, I mean next 80 years, and then we can project saying that yes, this may be the condition by end of the century, or this is what is going to happen. So here, uh, uh, we, as a part of this project which I mentioned earlier, we conducted very detailed study for entire Kerala, and uh, I am going to present for only for Motra River Basin here. So we conducted studies with respect to what can happen with respect to changes in land use, land cover. So that is called a scenario one. So where changes in land use, land cover. 
So very similar way, uh, we studied about 30 or 40 years of the changes what is happening in Kerala or this all this area. And then we uh, there is a specific model called land change modeler, so LCM. That model uh, we can put to this input data and then we can also project what can happen by end of the 21st century. Uh, how the land use land change, the same trend is continuing. What will be the condition, whether Kwanamangalam, all this area will be totally uh, urbanized or whether uh, still uh, some plantation will be there or some crops will be there. All those things can be done. So that we, we, we projected till 2100 using this model and that is we call it as land use, land cover change studies. And then uh, we kept a constant uh, land use, land cover and then we studied uh, the, the, the climate change uh, only, I mean what can happen up to 2100 that we studied for this uh, uh, 4.5 8.5 scenario. And actually what can happen is that both the land use, land cover and ch can change and climate can change. So that is all this called a scenario three. So here, uh, uh, since as I mentioned, I'm going to mention, uh, uh, present the results for Motuar Verbasin, which we studied as a part of this project. So those who are interested, if you search with my name, you can see all these papers, very international journals, number of journal papers, four papers, you can, I have listed here. You can see these journals, much more detailed uh, deta uh, studies, you can see in all these areas uh, related to uh, what is happening. So now we are dis going to discuss the motor and basin. So all of you are familiar, many of you will be from this basin only. Uh, so the total catchment area here is about, uh, so this is the boundary. So you see that uh, this is Kodamangalam, uh, the, this river, and this is uh, Todavada, and this is uh, uh, Kaliyar, Kaliyar and Todavada. So three rivers are coming and then joining to Motuva somewhere here. This is Motuva and then uh, it will be going and then joining the uh, backwaters of uh, Cochin. So that is the, the river you can see. So here Kodamangalam river is this and uh, we are located somewhere here now. Currently we, our location is here. Uh, so here uh, the total area is about 1600 square kilometer and uh, many districts like Kottegar, Navalam, Idiki are covered. And uh, here the total river uh, length is about 121 kilometer. And uh, here it was, the river is originated Taraga Manga, Mang Manganam, something like that. Then uh, average rainfall in this area is about 3,500 millimeter. And uh, stream flow, average stream flow is about uh, 3,560 million meter cube if you consider Motuvada as a waste. And uh, here there is an irrigation project called Malangara. Uh, and then also uh, main tributaries like Kaliyar, Todubada, Kodamangalam. So this is Kodamangalam, this is Kaliyar and Todubada river basins. So here, as I mentioned, if you look into now, I hope you are here, we are sitting on this basin itself and that is where uh, the area. So there is so much of data is needed when you are going for a scientific study of this magnitude, since we are going to study 1,560 1, square kilometer area. So that is why you can see we need a uh, digital elevation model. This shows the digital elevation model. Digital elevation model means it is showing what is the maximum height. You can see this hilly region and then it is keep on decreasing. It is almost zero here. So you can see that uh, most of the land is plain area and we are having the hilly area. This is called a digital elevation model. And then we are having the stream network. So uh, main river network is here and this is called uh, soil data. So here you can see that we are having clay, then uh, sandy clay, like that various. Uh, this data also we can obtain from the National Bureau of so Soil Studies. And this is the model where we can see this called a HRU, Hydrology Response Unit, where uh, small, small uh, sub areas you can see. And so that we can critically study what is happening in this area. So here, these are the data sets. So for a holistic study, to st do this kind of studies on your desktop or laptop, so we can get uh, many data from outside. So we used a Cartosat uh, ISRO uh, satellite data 30 meter resolution, then soil map of 1000 uh, meter, and uh, then uh, uh, material data from the IMD, the material department. Like that, uh, even uh, the river flow data we obtained from Central Water Commission since we need to do some calibration and validation. And we used, uh, say, uh, to understand how the changes are taking place in this area from 1988 onwards, we got the uh, data from Landsat. You see that uh, American uh, satellites are there from 1980s onwards. So we can get to their data freely and then we can obtain this called a land use land cover change of that. So we studied for 1988, 97, 2008, then 2018. 
So we used these three data sets to project what is going to happen in 2018, and then we intercompared the actual data of 2018, and then we understood, yes, our model is working fine. Then we project for 2100, up to 2100, we can project how the land use land cover is going to change in this motor river basin. So that is the way uh, we did study, and then we used the SWAT model, wherever all these data are required, and then uh, we used the five GCMs, general circulation models, or global circulation models, and then we, we are going to project, project what is the situation, what can be, or what may be the situation by 2030, 2050, 2070, or 2100. So that is the way uh, the studies goes. So here this data is already I mentioned. So here uh, 2018 analysis shows that in, in Motor River Basin about 23 percent is forest, followed by around 42.3 uh, percent plantation. Plantation means it can be coconut, it can be rubber plantation. Then agriculture area is 22.5, and the built-up area is 6 percent. The average annual precipitation already mentioned and the temperature variation also uh, we are seen earlier. So here as I mentioned, uh, how we are, as I mentioned, we are now coming from global trend to using a global circulation, a very big model, coming to our area of this motor river basin. So we need to see that how is this happening, whether we are getting is correct or not. So we use past data of 20 or 30 years data from Indian Meteorology Department and uh, that is for one is for rainfall, then another for maximum temperature and another for minimum temperature. So you see that various GCMs, global circulation models, we compared and then we found that yes, we are getting very good trends, very good ma match we are getting. So that is why we believe that, we scientists believe that this can be the trend for the future also. I mean up to 2100, uh, at the end of the century, what can happen. So this we call it as Taylor diagram. So here this, so it is giving 0.9 uh, correlation means we are getting very good results. So that is what is called. So this shows what was there in Kerala, in Motor Basin, 1988, 99, 2018, and uh, then uh, 2018 projected, and then what was uh, uh, done by Axel, and then using that data, we projected what will be the land use, land cover, or the changes, what can happen, what will be the situation in 2030 here, and then what is the happen happening in 2050, 2075 and 2100. So that we call it as modeling. So you can see that this red indicates urbanization. So we everybody, we are having a lot of houses constructed. So much changes is taking place. You can see that this red color is keep on increasing. So here, now in 1988, so uh, Soli Madam or those who are old people here, we know how old the situation was even in Kodamangalan town or all this area. Now in the 2018, which is very near time, you see that a lot of reddish color you can see, it is increasing. And by 2100, 2100 end of the century, it is observed that almost 15 percent urbanization. So what is the impact of urbanization? You know that there will be a lot of impacts. It is not only climatological, it is so many other changes can happen. Of course, structural engineers may be more happy since a lot of construction is going to happen. That may, maybe you may be happy in one way. But the nature is concerned, there will be a lot of impacts. So that is what is going to happen. So you see that here, this table shows what is going to happen. So you see that the built-up area. Built-up area is very much uh, important as far as the climate or the, the, the runoff or the flooding is concerned. So here, it was hardly 1.4% in 1988. Then uh, 2018, it is increased 6%. And then our projection shows that by 2100, it will be almost 16%. So it is keep on increasing. Then forests, anyway, it was much more in 1988, 43%. Then it is now in 2018, it has come to 30%. And our projection shows it can go to 21.3%. So that means, this you know that, uh, um, uh, all of you know that there is forests are concerned, there is some government restriction also there. Within that restriction, if strictly the rules are implemented, still uh, we may have a 21% forest. That is the reason is that forests are concerned and then uh, government has rules and regulation. Uh, but uh, the plantations, you can see that, uh, that everybody knows we are having so much of our plantation in this area, then uh, coconut, all those things, it is keep on increasing. Now it is 37 percent, it may go even to 41 percent at that time. And then agriculture is concerned, now the common trend is that uh, all of you, whenever I was young, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, paddies or rice cultivation was there. Now that was 25 percent in 1988, now it is hardly 23 percent, 
then it is going to further reduce. Since normal agriculture will be reduced, but the plantation will be increasing. And then, like uh, even barrel land, all those things will be reduced. So this is, uh, we call it as land change modeling. So that is a very important, very, uh, say, uh, very satisfying kind of uh, results we can get it. And those are interested in this area. This is uh, also we call it as remote sensing and GIS. Lot of scope is there. And many, many companies are coming. Lot of job scope also there. And since uh, now everything, you see that including drones, you know, everybody knows what is a drone. So drone also coming in this area. And then we can uh, do wonderful studies. And uh, so many things can be done. Okay, now using this, we run this SAT model and we calibrated it and then you can see that this is called calibration and validation. Since we need to see that whenever we are going to project for 2100, whatever we are having, now what is in the past, whether we are able to replicate or not. So that is what you can see here. Many of this, uh, this uh, upper one is rainfall and lower one is runoff. I mean, uh, for various, like uh, Kalambur. Kalambur is near to uh, that region. And another one is Ramamangalam. These stations we calibrated and validated and observed that, yes, we are getting good results. So that is why this model we are using. And there are so many parameters, anyway, that may not be interesting to you for this SWAT model is concerned. So now, using this, we did uh, three types of studies. One is called uh, land use, land cover change modeling. So here, what we did, we so we want to understand if the, the built-up area is increasing, what can happen? If the forest is decreasing, what can happen? So then what we did, we only changed the land use land cover. So for the up to 2100, using this land use land cover, we use the constant climate, like uh, 86 to 2015, whatever the average of that, we use the rainfall, all those things. And then we studied, and then you can see the results are here. If this is the runoff change from baseline. Baseline is 1988. You can see that the runoff, many, most of the months, it is going on, going on increasing. Why the increasing trend? You see that? What is happening in the built-up areas increasing means the runoff will be increasing. So there are more possibilities of flooding in future. So that is, uh, uh, so do, the young generation don't think that, okay, if I go to Canada or Germany or these things, I will be escaped. No, there also, last few months, there was a heavy flooding in Germany also, since I am also uh, working in those areas. So heavy flooding, most of the areas. So here you can see the runoff is increasing with the land use, land cover change. And then summer, summer time, I mean, you know that now we are having a lot of summer rains. So here April, uh, May, June, where it is increasing. So that kind of trends we have captured here. And then uh, we, we studied, uh, you see that in Kodamangalam is somewhat this area. So here uh, you see that there is an increasing trend of um, runoff. Runoff means once the rainfall happens, more water will be coming and there is an increasing trend you can see here. So all these trends we uh, modeled up to 2100. So you see that uh, your generation and your next generation also, what is what may happen, I am not saying that this will happen, but what may happen, that kind of studies uh, we can we can do it now and then that kind of study results are here. So you see that uh, especially downstream area, especially Cochin region, you see that wherever the, uh, the motor river is joining, that can be heavy flooding uh, due to due to this, uh, uh, all the urbanization, all that kind of impacts. And uh, this shows change in runoff analysis uh, from the baseline, so there's, there's a spatial distribution of change in surface runoff. So if you consider 1988, wherever the, the urbanization was very low, and if you compare with that, up to 2100, so this shows the variation like um, uh, 2018 and then uh, 2030, 2050, all those details you can see. Huge changes are observed whenever we, uh, the, what has happened with respect to 1988 to 2100. So that kind of studies are possible. And then uh, next uh, study was, okay, we kept the land use land cover constant and then we changed the climate. So that is the NDLCs we kept at 2018 and then we changed the climate. As I mentioned, climate is concerned. Two kinds of scenarios are there. One is called RCP 4.5 and second one is called RCP 8.5. So 8.5, let us pray that that will never happen. RCP 4.5 is quite optimistic that will be the mostly to be happening for our future generation. So there you can see that uh, we studied all those things. So there our observation is that there is a richer trend. So especially the, 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 the summer, summer time, there can be increase. So this uh, upper means going up and uh, down means uh, many areas. So there is a mixture trend. Sometimes 
the, there can be decrease, the rainfall can decrease and uh, sometimes it can go up or the runoff can increase. So that kind of mix-up trend is considered and then of course we can pinpoint even which area will be having more problems by using the, the percent study. So this level, this study, this uh, figure shows the uh, climate change up to with respect to runoff. So here you can see many areas, especially downstream side, uh, high rendy you can see. That means there is a possibility of flooding, more water will be there and uh, that kind of issues can be seen here. So then uh, uh, also we change with, with, with runoff, change in, I mean with respect to 1988, uh, what can happen with respect to uh, no, 2011, uh, with respect to that, what can happen up to 2100 with respect to this 4.5. I mean this is the optimistic scenario and this is the pessimistic scenario. Of course, there is a mixed trend since uh, these are all, so many parameters are involved and lot of uncertainties were there. So here, but you can see that in summer monsoon, summer time, in all the uh, studies shows that um, there is an increasing uh, runoff. So that means there is a, those who are in joining, going to join PWD or irrigation department or KSCB, you need to be extremely careful that uh, we need to operate the dams in, in, in such a way that in summer time, you cannot keep so much of water. So that is what has happened in 2018 also. So we need to have an appropriate uh, operating policy for uh, the dams are also concerned. So you see that in many places, we can see that there is an increasing trend of uh, runoff. So then we studied with respect to combined. This is actually what is actually going to happen. Combined impact of land use, land cover, and climate change and runoff. So here also you can see there is a possibility of more flooding in this uh, downstream region, I mean end of wherever the river joins the sea uh, and uh, here also this is Matra region, from there onwards there is possibility of uh, increasing runoff or the flooding. So this both scenario, one is 4.5 which is optimistic and this is pessimistic, 8.5 scenario which may not happen but this is definitely, this is the situation. Okay, finally to conclude, so here uh, we can see that um, uh, the, the various studies which are done, so the land use land cover classification based on historic period overall accuracy we got 80 percent or above. Forest was found to be severely affected which decreased the faster pace for uh, up to 2100 and then you can see the urbanization uh, is drastically increasing and plantation is also is increasing and sub basin level analysis or runoff variations from baseline shows that runoff will increase for all land use land cover changes scenario so more uh, flooding can be expected and the plots of changes in monthly runoff from baseline shows that uh, highest variation is observed in April, May and June. Similarly, for climate change impact, so there are some difference between the scenarios among future periods. In general, the stream flow was predicted to uh, some wet season, I mean monsoon season less, uh, uh, but uh, summer season it is going to increase. So that is uh, what this study shows. So finally, to conclude, climate change is, you see that uh, this is what we are, we are al always feeling and it is already happening. The climate change is likely to impact most hydrologic forces, not only hydrologic forces, and there our lives will be affected. It is not only uh, rain, but everything will be affected. Impacts need to be assessed at a very local scale, regional scale, river basin scale, and uh, the global circulation model, as I mentioned, these are the credible tools which we can use for these kinds of studies. So scale issues are there, larger scales to lower scales we need to come down. So results from the studies are used for developing adaptive responses. So if, a, if you are going to construct a major dam, we are going to construct a major airport, these kinds of studies are important and say that yes, which region to be done, all those things has to come. And uh, for operating policies or uh, changing coping pattern, all those things we need to study. So similar results may be used for developing industry duration frequency relationship and so that we can see that what is going to happen in 100 year time. So finally, there are some of the major challenges as far as sustainable water resource management is concerned. So as you can see that there is definite changes with respect to climate change and then also land use land cover change. So impacts imposed we need to study as, a, as an engineer, as a scientist we need to study all these details. So land use land cover is drastically changing and then we need to understand what is happening and then uh, of course with respect to climate change the combined assessment is done. So for sustainable development, we need to look for conservation of uh, water, minimizing wastage and ensuring equitable distribution uh, through integrated water resource management. So that is one policy change that should happen within the government level. And then 
the goals identified under sustained water resource management challenges like a comprehensive water uh, database in public domain. So actually whatever the, our studies we are going to give to uh, government of India and they may put in website and those the students or who are interested they can download it and study further. Reliable assessment of impact of climate change on water resources required. Promotion of citizens. You see that uh, in 2018 flooding, though I was sitting in Mumbai, I was observing what is happening. So here the information is very, very important. So this is, we are now in an era of uh, information technology. So we need to what is going to happen, what can happen in few hours or few day, uh, days in advance. Then we can save many lives, many of our hurdles or many of hazards can be they are reduced drastically. So that is where the, the reliable assessment is required and then promotion of citizen and state action for uh, these kinds of information is required, focused attention for uh, say, as I mentioned, it is not only flooding, many areas uh, after 2018 flooding, you have read there was a drought kind of situation. So the over exploited area that we need to see. And then being engineers, we need to see that uh, how we can increase the efficiency of water use. Say, for example, even in when you are going to toilet, so why we need to have a fresh tank of 20, 20 liters? Why not to improve it with uh, even 3 or 4 liters, we can use the flushing. So that kind of efficiency is required in all aspects. It is, I am simply telling one small example, but be, be, you, be, be, being a young generation, Please think further and how you try to innovate and then come up with uh, innovative solutions. So that is what we need, the society needs and uh, we need all of your uh, innovations, your own uh, uh, improvements as far as what is available. So that way uh, we need to, as I mentioned, we need to go for promotion of basin level water resource management so that it is not only for uh, just for water supply but uh, total ecological development, total environment is concerned. We need to have a safe environment and we need to look into this. So uh, with this I am concluding here, but uh, why I presented this in front of you is that uh, other than structural engineering and construction engineering, there is so many aspects that are there in civil engineering. Civil engineering is the mother of all engineering. So we, you can have so many other aspects there. You can contribute a lot and study a lot and then also you can get a good employment or you can even start up companies can come in GIS, remote sensing or these kinds of various aspects of various facets of civil engineering. So with this I am stopping here. So if you have got any questions, I uh, will be very happy to answer your question. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions? Good evening, sir. I'm Akshara. So my question is, as uh, we, are a develop we are in a developing country, how can we reduce the use of land as we are developing our country by using these lands, right? So how can we reduce the land use? Land use reducing means, say for example, so urbanization, now we need to think about everybody in Kerala. If you travel from left to, uh, say, to Kanyagamari to Castle Ward, you can see that uh, everybody is having a, uh, house in five or ten cents of land. You show that why not you think about a flat systems wherever people can, especially okay, wherever the, the Kutnad region or many of the area where flooding is there. Why not you go for a flat and then that land be agricultural land or whatever the for the purpose. So that way we can systematically reduce the urbanization too much. Too much is not required, too much uh, things are not required. Whatever, whatever is available, we increase the efficiency. So that is what is much more important. Say, whenever we talk about, okay, say, now we are thinking about another kind of railway system. Why not the existing railway cannot be, the, its efficiency cannot be increased? We can, we can, we can go to 120 kilometer per hour, per hour per, say, we can run the train. That is possible. So instead of thinking that we are going looking for further, further urbanization, further development, of course I am not against for any of the developments, but we need to see what is happening in the system. System, if you see that uh, the, the nature is, the mother nature is not only for me, not only for you, but for the future generations. Whatever is there, we need to, at least we should not spoil the existing system and hand over a very worst system to your, your next generation. That should not happen. So that is very important. There are so many things are available. Why we need to have everything in a, in a lateral spreading? But we can go for vertical. That is where the structure engineers will be also very happy to have more and more uh, higher level, high rising buildings and high rising things. We do not need that kind of thing. So that is definitely it is possible. And then uh, you see that another, another thing is that we don't have to go for all this uh, 
river say rivers or natural channels are concerned we should give it its nature should flow we should not uh, put all the buns everything on the sides or you you engross the the river banks and construct building or all those things that should not happen let the river flows its own natural way and there is so much other land nature god has given so much of things in front of you why not why you only attack you there should be many things are concerned you see that uh, greediness of the people greedy gre greedy people it is not only politicians but all kinds of people so that is where the things are getting spoiled day by day that is what is happening Okay, I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, any other question? Please come. No problem. You see, I am just like a student like you, so you can ask any question. No problem. So please come up. I hope uh, at least you understood that. Other than structure engineering, construction engineering, so many aspects are there in civil engineering. I am also a proud civil engineer only. So please, uh, there is so many options are there in front of you. what all differences are there between ar5 and ar6 annual report 5 and 6 annual five, reports 5 and 6 are a very similar report only thing is that uh, say what is happening last uh, 10 years and then uh, you see that one aspect of like uh, uh, i do not know whether you have heard of paris agreement where uh, most of the nations came up uh, and uh, uh, decided to reduce the 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 global warming and uh, come to 1.5 degrees centigrade they want but then at that time, you see that uh, uh, President Trump, who was the president of America, then he was against this since they want to develop in a fast pace. So the, whatever the changes that has happened last uh, few, uh, 10 years, say for example, when the AR5 report came in 2014, that was the study started in 2010 itself. So what was happening, that is based upon that 2014. Now AR6 report has come out in 2021. So the last 8-10 years of uh, studies are used and then you see that uh, more uh, high resolution satellites, you see that most of the data we are collecting through satellites. So high, res high resolution satellite means we get more data, more details we'll be getting. And then uh, the computing power also increased. So for example, if it is teraflop in, uh, in uh, 2011, it has gone to further thousand times of that. So then we can have better models and better prediction. The variation will be some small level, but of course it will give us more uh, sophisticated details, okay? Any other questions? So being civil engineers, please ask. I am not, I am not only in water resource or environment. You can ask any questions related to your career also. I'll be happy to answer. So I, under, I understand that many of your tendency to go to abroad. So even I, I can give a details on what is happening abroad. If you have got any questions, you are most welcome related to your career as a civil engineer or as a, not only on this topic, any topic. So Boys. Boys have no questions. There are so many boys are sitting here. No questions from your side. Sir. Yes, please. Uh, in your presentation, runoff is more in summer season. Uh, can you say the reason? Summer season, you see, that is what you call it as climate change. You see that, uh, you see, what is the major impact is happening is that uh, the, the due to climate, uh, the global warming, mainly you see that uh, the, the, the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean or Arabian Ocean or Arabian Sea or... Uh, uh, Beng Bay of Bengal, it is getting warming very fast. So, see, see the, the warming of the seawater means, you see that uh, all of you know that uh, water can absorb uh, heat very fast and it will be uh, pushing down for the temperature very slow. But land is concerned, it will get uh, faster, it will be uh, getting warm faster and it will be also getting cool faster. But see, water is concerned, it will be warming slowly and then it will be also uh, the radiation will be taking place slow, slow pace. So due to the heavy warming in the Indian Ocean, the climate, our climate pattern is changing. So what happened last few years, you can see that uh, uh, the, the monsoon kind of situation starts by March, uh, middle or even uh, by uh, beginning of April. So that, that is a situation is that due to the, the global warming or climate change, that is what only the answer we can say currently. And more uh, detailed studies, you see that what are the studies what is available currently is all coming from uh, the, the global level studies, but we need to have a, a micro level studies for uh, southern India or uh, the Indian Ocean is concerned, much more detailed studies are concerned. So that is why youngsters like you people should come up with a more uh, scientific vigor to study further on these all details. 
okay so this is mainly we we attribute this to the climate change impacts that is what is uh, nowadays we are saying about this there are summer rains okay any other question yes please so from where will we get data for doing this project so this data source i have already shown here so you can see that this is most of the data is available in uh, open source so you see that here i have already put uh, various sources so the website if you search that uh, many of these things are we can download so here you can see i have listed the data sources so here uh, source like uh, nrc isro then uh, soil data then imd then uh, uh, various websites are also available sir, so rainfall from data what about rainfall data rainfall data imd indian material department from where indian meteorological department imd but Pune. sir that from imd it is very costly is there any no, no, other no no now it was earlier but now it is gridded uh, data is available free they have made it free gridded data from imd yeah imd gridded okay, data gridded gridded data means it is not for a particular station they put a 0.25 degree 25 km by 25 km gridding we can do okay that, that. okay sir okay okay any other question come on boys all girls only ask you don't feel that uh, yes, you should ask some question to me i told you no need to worry about this topic any topic can be discussed no problem okay so otherwise i am going to ask you question what do you want to say especially i am un i understand there are so many pioneer civil engineers are here so what is your ambition to become after after getting your btech degree i am asking you i am asking you only you are a final year huh <laughs> you are first year no final year students are here <laughs> nobody is there in uh, final year huh yellow tag yes sir we are ha um, uh, finally sir having this yellow tags okay so you are a final year student yes sir <laughs> okay okay you can ask no problem anything related to your career or anything you can ask no problem i will be happy to answer whatever is possible so what are you going to do after your btech i would like to be a project manager project manager you are looking yeah. for construction management yes sir I yeah. would like to work in some management fields. So. So you are planning to do an MBA or what later or now? No, I'm just in construction management. All some three months courses based on project management, and QA, QSCs like that. So I want to work in some industries based on these managements and constructions. Okay. That's what I'm planning right now. Okay. So you catch your own friends. Some of them will be here. You can ask them to come up. you see that it is strange that uh, being i am a civil engineer you are a civil engineer i am from your place and uh, say many school students come to iit bombay civil department and they ask uh, all the students will be asking uh, different kinds of questions it is a shame that you people don't have any questions to me so how many of you want to go for higher studies can you raise your hand okay you don't have to how many of you want to go for higher studies final year students yeah final year